The concept of stealing powers of others isn't very rare in fiction, and I've always been a fan of it. In D&D 3.5 there was a Spell Thief class, introduced in the Complete Adventurer book. The class is quite interesting in my opinion. The Thief part of the class works in two ways. The Spell Thief can steal spells, and the Spell Thief can also work as a normal rogue. Aside from sneak attack, it got some additional class features and even spells up to the 4th level. However, I have never seen it in play. From what I remember from the online discussion back in the day, it was considered way too situational. If there are no enemy casters to steal spells from, then you're basically playing a downgraded rogue. This is a fair point. But anyway, let's see how one can make such character in GURPS. The first class feature is sneak attack. There is no need to convert this feature to GURPS due to these two systems having different granularities. A sneak attack in GURPS is just an attack at the vitals. However, you can also go the way Dungeon Fantasy does it and give the spell thief striking strength with accessibility only on surprise attack. Spell grace is just magic resistance with improved enhancement. And trap finding is just the trap skill. Now let's take a look at the signature ability Steal Spell. Here's how it works in D&D. The spell thief must deliver a successful sneak attack against the spellcaster and decrease the sneak attack damage by a die. In case of a willing target, a simple touch is sufficient. The spell thief chooses which spell to steal, but if the victim doesn't know the spell, a random spell is stolen instead. Then he may cast the spell himself within one hour of stealing, and the victim loses the ability to cast the spell for one minute for some reason. In GURPS, you build this ability with a neutralize advantage, which can be very pricey, as the base cost is a whopping 50 points. Here is my write-up. A spell thief can siphon spell energy away from his target and use it himself. A spell thief must spend 1 FP, touch an opponent and win a quick contest of skill against the subject's will. The subject gets a bonus equal to his spellcasting talent. The spell thief then gains an ability to cast one of the subject's spell for margin of victory minutes. If the spell that is built as an advantage has a power skill attached to it, the spell thief steals it as well, but uses his own attributes when determining the skill level. The stolen ability must be a spell, not just any magical ability. The victim loses the ability to cast the spell for this duration. A critical failure means that this ability is crippled for 1d hours. Once the spell thief has stolen a spell from a given subject, he cannot affect him again until his powers recover. If the spell thief steals a spell from a different subject or steals a different spell from the same subject, the current spell returns to the subject. If the spell thief tries to steal the same spell from the same subject, he resets the duration. Multiple attackers can use steal spell on the same target, stealing different spells. The point value of stolen spells cannot exceed the total value of this ability. This is really important for spells as skills magic systems, but it is important when stealing spells built as advantage-based abilities, for example sorcery spells. A spell thief can also have a power pool that allows him to increase this amount. Each point in this power pool costs one character point and increases the value of steal spell for the purpose of what powers a spell thief can steal. Modifiers never affect the points in this power pool. Thus, Steal spell 1 allows the spell thief to steal a spell that costs up to 48 points, but steal spell 1 with 20 points in the power pool will allow the spell thief to steal a spell that costs up to 68 points. At level 1 using this ability requires a skin to skin contact and at level 2 any touch will suffice. As you can see I introduced the leveling scheme to make the ability more affordable. Also. You can see that I removed the requirement for a sneak attack, as it doesn't really make much sense to me. After all, you can use it with a simple touch against an ally. The nuisance effect is there because neutralize by default can be used to dispel ongoing effects. One power spells is a hefty limitation, but it limits the abilities to be stolen to spells. Thus, you cannot steal other magical abilities that are not classified as spells. Then you might have noticed this huge new paragraph that cannot be found in GURPS powers, where the neutralize advantage is properly introduced. This rule can be found on Christopher Rice's blog post that I link in the description. 
Without it, Neutralize has the potential to get out of hand. For example, you could steal a spell that costs 1000 points despite only paying 50 points for it. The clause for stealing power skills was taken from the steel power ability from GURPS psionic powers. Also, because this is a signature ability of the spell thief class and you are unlikely to have many magical abilities, I suggest attaching a power skill to it. This will allow the spell thief get better at stealing spells more cost efficiently and better than those who are limited by the talent cap. In addition, this opens up power techniques that expand the possibilities in a more cost efficient manner. For example, I introduced the following techniques that cover most of the remaining class features. Precision to allow the spell thief to choose which spell to steal. Prolonged theft to increase the duration. Ranged theft to do it at range. Steal magic to be able to steal any magical ability. Steal energy resistance and steal magic resistance to steal DR against energy attacks and steal magic resistance. This is not rules as written, but I decided to treat it as uh, simply an extended ex enhancement for neutralize. Then steal spell effect to be able to steal ongoing spell effects. Uh, but what about the rest of the abilities? This is what arcane sight looks like. This is a relatively simple ability, yet again with an attached power skill and a leveling scheme. And finally, we have spell absorption. This one has no power skill. The spell absorption enhancement for magic resistance can be found in Pyramid 375. But what about the actual spell casting? Complete Adventure says that the spell thieves have very limited access to spells and that their magic is intuitive in nature, but can be trained. So let's use the following approach. The spell thief's scope of abilities is limited. The spell thief can only take knowledge, illusion and meta spells in addition to the abilities described above. Since we do not allow the spell thieves to improvise, they do not take the sorcerer's empowerment advantage and simply purchase their spells as an array of alternative abilities. Alternative rituals from Girl Somatology Sorcery are in effect, but you can also use the alternative or additional ritual for the Super Sorcery article from Pyramid 3105. And also, as usual, for such casters, I introduced the PK's house rule for uh, casting time. Train fatigue for skill is available, uh, repeated attempts are enforced, and when rolling a critical failure on a casting roll, use the critical spell failure table. Phew, that's done. But let's not forget that Complete Adventure also talks about a variant class, the Psy Thief. The Psy Thief is the same class as Spell Thief, but it steals psionic powers instead of spells. How do you do it in GURPS? There's no need to. Just use a steel power ability from GURPS psionic powers and that's it. There was another class that stole spells from others. The Jackal Kit for Wizards was published in the Complete Shair's Handbook for AD&D 2E. The Jackal was a wizard who couldn't actually learn any spells. Instead, he would steal his spells from the minds of other wizards. In AD&D, it simply required the jackal to stay within line of sight of the victim wizard, then make some rolls. The spell stayed stolen indefinitely, and the jackal could have multiple spells stolen at the same time. It is impossible to build this in GURPS with neutralize without any house rules. And in with house rules, such an ability would cost several hundred points. So we have to compromise and make something similar, at least in flavor. GURPS Psionic Powers introduced a new form of modular abilities called Telepathic Learning. If we modify it, we could get a rough approximation. I tried to, but the result also was way too expensive to be useful. Alas, it seems that I am powerless here. But anyway, that was my take on the Spell Thief class in GURPS. I really like this concept, and it's a shame that it was very unpopular in D&D. However, the problem that plagued it in D&D still remains in GURPS. The ability is very situational and basically very GM dependent. If the GM doesn't provide you with magical opponency, your ability is useless. However, if you have a spellcasting ally, you also could do some fun stuff with power theft. For example, you could uh, circumvent the restriction to have only one active spell at the same time, if you even have it. But anyway. Thank you for watching, 
and I will see you next time.